All right, guys, Sunday, July 18th. All right, so what we're going to do here real quick, I'm going to cover some of the stuff um, that we talked about in the chat room on Friday. Um, you guys had asked a bunch of questions about uh, one of the hulks and the trades and kind of wanted some insight on how to look at them because um, I know I kind of went over quite a bit uh, in the chat room <laughs> for once um, without being stuck in the trade. And this video that I'm going to do here is going to give you a lot of good insight. So kind of pay attention to this one. This should help you out with a lot of your future trades. In fact, what I'm going to do is grant you guys a little gift. For those of you who aren't in the, you know, taking the trading course but are in the chat room or whatever, I'm going to go over one of my resources that helped me a lot when it comes to trading things like halts and breaking news and stuff like that because it's going to be very, very important for you as a trader to know. Um, you know, this thing has saved me countless, countless times, many trades, um, from, you know, having to suffer so many losses, you know, in this tool, I, I go over it in detail in the course, but I'm going to pull it up here in, um, in this video that I recap for you guys. So you can kind of, you know, get a sense of how to work it and everything like that. Um, but the importance of this video too, is going to be able to show you guys why it's very important, um, you know, to learn the things that I teach you. Um, because knowing all this stuff is going to help you be a much better trader. Um, not only knowing it, but also putting it into practice and things like that. Because, you know, a lot of times you guys might see just things like my charts. Um, you know, when I post the results, you might see my charts, my indicators, and I've talked to you guys about that too. But all that stuff means nothing, um, you know, if you don't know the things that you need to know. In fact, these two halts are perfect examples of why, you know, indicators you know that you might have aren't always reliable when it comes to taking trades uh, so i go over in detail why and what other things you should look for outside of just having a great chart and great indicators to know if you need to be taking a trade and what to do um, and everything with that trade so watch this video in its entirety um, if you have any questions about it um, you know let me know but i'm gonna briefly go over it in that good old tool that i use every single time i'm taking a trade it's actually you know gonna be a way that you can do it on your own too um, so definitely pay attention to what's going on here uh, the details of it will be more into the to the video so take a look stay tuned stay green all right guys so we're going to get everything started here we're going to talk about kdmn um, and that's going to be one of the three that we're going to cover here in the video um, so let's get this pulled up here all right so we had kdmn right here alerted and it was you know halted during pending news then here's the news that came out and it was still halted until about 2:45 eastern time okay and later on here we're going to go over kd krbp and then you know kind of cover that one too but let's kind of start with this one here and again guys this is a big reason why i tell you that one indicator there is no specific indicator that's going to be all in all because some indicators can give you false indications of you know what a stock is going to do for example the rsi here the MACD here, and even the super trend indicator. You guys know these three are, you know, three main indicators that I use, but that isn't the sole reason to actually get into a stock based on what those things indicate. There are other things you want to look at, such as like level two and all the stuff I go over in the course. Um, and I'm in fact going to cover another thing to kind of look at that you want to consider as well too. But mainly what we're going to be talking about here, like I said before, is the halts and kind of how to trade them and why, you know, to get into them or not to get into them and what things you should be looking for during a halt. So of course the stock was halted, you know, for the news and even the news itself seemed like it was great news, right? You know, um, it, it seemed like it was good news. Uh, even some people in the chat room said it was great news. Uh, you know, they got, got full approval for a treatment for patients with chronic graft versus uh, host disease. Sounds good. I mean, I'm not, you know, a pharmaceutical person, but I mean, it did sound good. Um, you know, when it, you know, when it was announced. So obviously people would think at that point, if you just trade off of maybe indicators alone, if you trade just off of news alone, you would naturally think, oh, this would be a good stock to get in and trade, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Um, and this is another reason why things, you know, like setups are important for you as well too. Uh, again, no one thing is an all in indication of a stock rising or falling, but putting these things together, like I show you guys in the course is how you're able to maximize, you know, your odds of being successful on a trade depending on your trading strategy okay so i didn't trade neither one of these of course you guys know that but some people in the chat room did jump on it some people didn't some people just had questions about it so that's why we're going to cover this here now if you look at this here 
when the halt resumed, look at the indications you had. It was already high in the relative strength index. Moving average convergence divergence was showing up. You even got a, a strong buy signal here from a super trend. Now, normally you would think, hey, I should jump in that, right? How would you know not to have done that? Because if you did jump in it, you probably would have got caught up in here. And obviously this is a whole strong level of resistance. Um, you should know what candlestick this is, which is one indicator of why you probably shouldn't have got into it. Um, you know, and on top of that, you still, there's no reason to enter in the trade unless you're trying to really, really quickly scalp, which, you know, unless you got the thing set up that I told you to set up in the course, you don't need to be doing that. But anyways, this was a midday halt and so was KR, KBRP. But what would you look for? What is something you should consider when there's a halt like that? And this was a long halt. This was like a 20 minute halt, I believe. Um, it didn't resume till, you know, 2.45 and we got it really early. But another thing that I do when I'm looking at trades, and especially in halts, and I have time to actually do a little bit of research before the stock starts to move. This is one of the things that I show you guys in the course. So you guys are getting a little free tip here. You members that, you know, are in the chat room and stuff like that, even if you're not on the course, but you, should, you know, you got a little tip here. Um, one of the things that I like to do is look at the opposite side of what's going on. If I'm looking to buy, I want to see what the longs, I mean, what the shorts would probably be doing. And in order to do that, there's two different ways you can do it. There's a setting in Webull where you can pull it up and kind of get the same information. But what I like to typically do when I have time or just pull it up quickly is look at the short interest. And I do that by going here to shortsqueeze.com. Okay. When you go in there, you can type in the actual ticker you want to look at the short in, uh, information for. In this instance, it would be KDMN. So let's pull that up. Obviously, I've looked at it before, and this is it. Um, that's what you would do. It would pull up. And then here is a lot of information that you got here to consider when you're looking at, you know, whether you're going to short a stock or whether you're going to long it. One of the things that stuck out that I also mentioned in the chat room as well, too, is like, look at this. 96% of this stock is owned by institutions. So it's not much room for, you know, re retail positions to come in which is kind of a good and a bad thing, depending on how you want to trade that. Okay. Um, another things you want to look at shorting the short increase and decrease uh, change, negative 6%, 23.99% um, of the shares are, are floated are, you know, are short. So that's a quarter of the, a quarter of the available um, shares to trade is, is shorted, which is quite a bit. Um, and it just kind of gives you things like the short interest, the, the short shares float, which is, you know, kind of high. So you kind of would know right off the back that that's a lot to go through. Um, and, you know, look at the trading average is, you know, quite substantial uh, versus what it normally trades. See, 27 million in volume traded today versus the average, which is one, which is quite a bit. All right. Um, so that's just something to kind of consider. You These things you want to look at when you're looking to trade, you know, halt if you have time to look at it of course i, I kind of break these down in detail in the course but just know that this is something you want to look at if you know that this many you know a quarter of the, the shares are shorted the short increase has you know decreased over a couple of years this is kind of a sign that hey there's going to be a lot of people wanting to cover um because there's a lot of shorts there that have been shorting the stock so they're probably going to want to cover and you know what is that going to happen that means you the sell button is going to be smacked. I mean, everyone, a lot of people are going to be wanting to sell, which not even a lot of people, a lot of, you know, probably the institutions are going to want to take profit because they're going to want to get their money too, which is probably where a lot of this long candle came in right here, where a lot of people were selling off and it's just continued to sell off. So that's just a little tip for you guys to kind of look at when you're trading a halt, you know, you want to look at the buying pressure and the selling pressure in level two as well. Not just go off of news, not just go off of indicators because those things will give you false signals as well too. You wanna to look at the big picture of the whole entire thing. And so knowing the short interest, knowing the percentage of shares available to float, know, knowing how much is held by institutions who you know might wanna take their profits um, and things like that will help you understand that if the stock can, put, you know, can go up or down, um, you know, which is a, a big indication. Not only that too, but again, waiting for setups. Even in fast moving trades like this, you guys know, I wait for that moving average to change twice. This thing never changed, which is a reason why I wouldn't have got into it because there's no, there's no setup. 
I don't care how good the numbers look. If there's no setup there, it doesn't make sense to trade, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's over its volume weighted its average price, which of course is going to be. It's been, you know, there was news. Um, so that's kind of a natural phenomenon that you should know what happened. Um, and obviously it's going to be overextended and everything like that, especially during the first moving average. The reason why I'm waiting for this to turn is because I need to see where the support is. And there's barely, you know, after the moving average change, there was barely any kind of strength there from the buyers in this area here. If you looked at a level two in this area here, there was barely any buyers coming in. And I said to you guys in the chat room, I said, hey, you know, if there's no buying pressure coming, there's no point of getting into this this trade. Some of you may have listened. Some of you may have not. <laughs> um, you know, what happens is, is up to you. Um, but, yeah, we had talked about this in the, in the chat room as well, too, for a brief, for a brief moment. I try to give you guys some insight on that. Uh, during off the day um someone said yeah if you if you you know if i said if you don't see a setup just leave it and there wasn't no setup so boom the stock opened up it shot up shot right back down that let me know right there one that a lot of people were re ready to take their profits and there was a lot of shorts coming in to short this thing regardless of the great news that was there um you know just knowing this information here made me think man a quarter of these people are ready. And the, the days of couple was very short as well, too. Um, so, I mean, 20.5 days. So there's no telling how long those shorts been in the hole in there. But anyways, you had a lot of people ready to short this thing. Um, so it just, you know, so many people taking profits right there um, for whatever reason. And then it just never, it never caught traction. Uh, so that was just a good reason, um, you know, to kind of look into that. So hopefully that guy, that helped you out going. When you have time to look at the short interests, Make sure you're understanding this information, and I go into detail with this in the course, but that helps you determine, you know, whether or not you should be jumping into something like that when it halts. More importantly, though, like I tell you guys, just off the gate without even being in a course or anything like that, is wait for a setup. There's no setup here. I don't care how this thing could have shot up all the way up to $50, just bringing in FOMO. It, would have, it probably would have shot right back down. I mean, even, you know, I think Blake has said it in the in the group, he was like, you know, if this thing shoots up and then comes right back down, it's sad. Well, you know, that happens a lot with these halts, especially when it comes to pinning news. Um, it is sad, but yeah, it definitely does happen. It's just trapping more bull, bull traders. Uh, happens quite a bit. So let's go into the next one real quick here, and we'll, we'll kind of compare that one too. And then there's um, KRBP. A little bit shortly was halted after that. Now, again, guys, this is on a Friday. You got to keep in mind, that's another thing you want to consider too. The market was already bearish. Um, so that's more of a reason for, you know, shorts to jump in and try to short that too. It's just more opportunity to trap bulls. Um, it happens. So just understand that too. So anyways, here was the halt for KRBP. Um, again, you got another, another false signal, buy signal, relative strength is high, moving averages is moving up. If you were just trading off of indicators, you would have thought, okay, maybe maybe a great time to get in and try to ride this wave. Well, it's not one. There's no setup. You just jumped in after pinning news. Why would you wait to, why would you do that? I don't know why, but unless you're scalping, like I said, no reason to do that, but it resumed right here, shot up and came down. You already got a candlestick that's telling you not to, you know, that is going to be bearish right there. Now, again, if you're in that halt and you're waiting while that halt is there, you can pull it up. KRBP. Look here, what do you got? Shares float, short interest. Short interest has increased 392%, which is quite a bit. Um, and you know, 2.61% of this is, is float, is, uh, shares of float. So it's 3%, just roughly rounded off, okay? Uh, that right there, that stuff, that information right there is telling you, okay, this thing is probably gonna shoot down. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So you, you know that, you know the market's bearish, regardless of what your indicators is, you don't wanna fight a trend teach you guys that too but ultimately there was never no setup either ever throughout the rest of the day so why would you even get in this trade i don't know why you, you probably jumped in hoping to try to catch the trade at the bottom and want to sell at the top no that's not a good it's not a good strategy guys trying to enter in something before it happens you're, you're going in that's not a plan so understand that but anyways you had all the indication to understand to know not to get in this trade you know what the news is? The news was pretty decent here too. Um, they had an update on its off shelf for solid tumors, blah, 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 whatever that is. You can always pull the article up if you want as well too. That's why it's in the alerts for you. 
So you pull that up. Okay, great. Good news. Indicators are strong, showing buys and, you know, things like that. Okay, that's decent. But once it resumes and you're looking at level two, knowing what the short interest is here too, you can kind of tell that this thing is going to, you know, be shooting down. And by time that the moving average has changed here and it keeps looking like this and there's no support showing, there's no reason to get in this trade. But again, that's just to recap it, guys. So know your setups, know what you're looking at, have a strategy. Um, yeah, this thing just never showed any reason to get into the trade, guys. This was just a, this was just a bunch of people selling off point blank period. There was never not, no reason to get in this trade. Even though it was alerted, it's alerted because of news. But if you're a short seller, man, you, you definitely probably banked on this thing. And that's a good whole dollar move right there. Or if you bought puts, I don't know if there's puts available for this. I don't trade puts in, in calls. But yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you some insight. Again, there's more than one reason to be looking into, you know, there's more than one thing to look into a trade aside from just indicators and charts and patterns, guys. And if you don't know any of that stuff, I don't know what to tell you, but to take a course or, you know, just do some more research and things like that. Um, so that's just kind of something to consider there. Um, another thing to kind of compare it to as well to you guys, because I think, uh, I don't know, I think Blake might've brought it up that, um, you know, KRBP and actually, uh, EVGO, he said kind of had like the same statistics, um, you know, like chart wise, I'm not chart wise, but like float wise shares and everything like that technicals in there were kind of the same i mean this thing kind of held up a lot more better than the others and he was you know he was asking why you know if they have the same kind of technicals you know similar things why is one trading differently than the other how come krbp shot up and just went straight down versus evgo shooting up and holding a little bit you know at its volume weighted average price and still, you know, giving you room to take profit and, and things like that. Well, another thing to consider as well, too, aside from the short interest, aside from the technicals, aside from the indicators, aside from, you know, the, the um, candlesticks, you also got to consider the market sentiment as far as what you're trading in the sectors you're trading in, guys. Again, this is another thing I go over in the course. So I, by now, if you're a beginner, I've probably mentioned a lot of things that you may not know of or don't even know what I'm talking about. If you're already kind of a little confused, it's, it's ideal that you probably go take, you know, take that, that course or just do research on it. But market sentiment is going to determine a lot, too, because the EVGO is in a, you know, the electrical vehicles um, sector kind of dealing with charging the electric vehicles. They've already had other good news during that day, too. The reason why this one probably did better than KRBP, that I, like I was telling Blake, is that the fact that this market is probably a little bit more hotter and more well-known than pharmaceuticals, um, you know, towards the public sentiment. So they're probably getting it. They were probably getting in more support, more, you know, more buyers, more indicators. You know, the yeah, the floats might have been the same. Yeah, the market cap might have been the same. Even, you know, the volume traded might have been the same. But it was probably attracting more buyers because, one, their news was they were partnering with GM and another brand as well too to be you know part of their electric vehicle fleet versus you know KRBP was just providing you know updates or KDMN was just providing you know patients you know with full treatment so i mean kind of look at it like this i mean how many people really know about chronic graft versus hot disease versus people that might know about companies like GM you know that they talk about every day. So that's another thing to consider. Um, this sector is a little bit more hotter than pharmaceuticals. So obviously it's gonna be able to bring more strength, more traction to keep it to where it would have some type of support. Spoiler alert, both EBGO and KDMN is gonna be on the watch list for the swing trades, you guys. So this might be something you wanna watch throughout the week. I am. Um, I'm just letting you know that now. This watch list is coming out pretty soon when I'm finishing up everything. But that was a difference. Even, you know, two stocks can have similar things technical wise or maybe even indicator wise or even chart pattern wise, but they might be in two different sectors. No two stocks are the same, guys. You got to remember that. So that's why you want to have a strategy so that when you do trade, that, you know, if you see your strategy is working on one versus the other, you'll know what to consider when you're trading another stock that's like that. 
okay? So just to recap, same information, um, EVGO. I don't know if it's changed since then, but yeah, it's probably not even on here. Um, same information, but just different setups. It was both halted, both of them, you know, shot up and came back down. Moving averages never changed until probably right about here. And then even then, that's when it started to go up. But it held more support than KRBP or KDMN. So market sentiment is something you want to keep in mind, as well as the overall market, as well as how it's doing that day when you guys are trading something like halts. And again, this is why I say wait until setups. You'll save yourself a lot of headache if you have a strategy and you wait for your setup to show versus trying to run in, get a gain, and get out. Because nine times out of 10, it's probably going to go the opposite way of what you think. And even if you want to trade both ways, you'll still end up losing. So anyway, guys, I hope that part helped. Um, you know, having pretty big floats doesn't really make a difference. Um, that's why you want to wait for setups. Because both KDMN and EVGO had pretty big floats. All right. All right. So other than that, that's just kind of just a brief recap of trading the halts and why I wait for setups. I don't try to jump in when it's, you know, halted and then try to get in and get out. I really, really do that. But when you're doing that, look at level two and the price action. You're going to have indicators that are leading indicators and isolators that are lagging. All right. You got to know the difference between the two guys. And again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> go take that course or read a, read the books in the learning lounge or something. Because the more this stuff that you know, the more you're going to be able to determine and be able to accurately identify what options that are going to be there to you to strengthen your odds of being able to come out on the right side of your trade based on your trading strategy. Okay. So hopefully that clears things up. Other than that, look out for the watch list coming out soon. Tomorrow is going to be hopefully a green day and uh, we can make some money. All right. Till then, stay green.